well played, very beautiful. Um, in the cantos, especially in the first one, but second also, um, you could voice it in your left hand, not that it would be obvious to a listener, but you have your left hand tied up in playing double stops, and it's a little like you're trying to talk like this, mm -hmm. you know? And I would love to hear you play where, concentrate on whatever voice interests you on, on the fact. <laughs> that you're not holding everything down. Sometimes a note that's remaining and you're changing a note, you're holding that remaining note so tight in your hand that when the note changes, you don't have the freedom to vibrate. So that if you had something like this, I would not be holding everything down in the same way. First of all, use basically your arm weight, not thumb and finger pressure, because this is an invitation to strangulation of the cello. You know, the, 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 and, and this canto is a terribly important part of this piece, uh, uh, you know, the several times that it appears. And somehow if you can use your hands almost you know, I would invite you in your practice to play it in play me the moving voices. Finger everything, but play me the moving voices. So you know, you Play me the moving voices, or sometimes that you you pick, for example, you have a tied A. So be sure you get, and you don't press the A down so hard that the vibrato on. So you line your hand up so that so that the leverage in your hand and the bow, the placement of the bow contact point is not exactly equal. Yes, you'll play them both. But that's because if you press everything down, you get everybody's uncomfortable. And for example, go, go, go on for a minute. Now you want the E. Yes, and sometimes I would finger everything and play me, do that again from the beginning, the way you just did. to take it easy on him because he'll paralyze the first finger. I practice a great many of my double stops fingering everything but playing only the solo voice. Now the complexity here is that the solo voice keeps shifting, mm -hmm. you know, so that, but you don't want to nail everything down, otherwise you can't vibrate with anything. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the joints on your fingers are stopped up in the pressure to play double stops. Play it regular now a little bit. And feature, f feature the moving voices. Back 
practice this way. When you practice this way, the bow is basically doing the contact point of the moving voice. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course, you, you'll play the other two, mm -hmm. but that you're, you're not, again, feeling with the bow that you've got to be here and here at the same time, here and here at the same time, which, which lends a, a tension to, to do this, for example. that yes even when you have a fifth uh, slide your weight over to the C and and just let the F take care of itself and yes put your weight over onto the C and and let it release so that Basically, I'm here, yeah, I get some F, but try. So the idea, and, and don't press with your thumb to tighten up the hand, just, and in the bow, as much as possible, I mean, you want to tell us the line, and once you've played something, that it's tied, Okay, you've played it. Mm -hmm. you, played, you played the contact point with the bow and you played it and you go on to the next, almost as though it were that free. Mm -hmm. You know. So, so for example, we've already heard the F. Mm -hmm. now, now, so you want the E and the, Yes, so, so, so when you do, as much as possible you want, I have my hand slightly turned to help, so I wouldn't plaster the F down back here and then you have to stretch for the E. I would, in other words, what you want is a singing E and a D. Yeah, you'll hold him, yeah, you know, but basically you want these guys. Mm -hmm. Yes? Yes. You can even practice getting rid of the F for a minute to see what sound you want. I mean, that would be another way to practice it. Play. Play this for me and play me only the moving voices and feel free to let go of the others. You even, you even, even let go of some of the tied notes for a moment and play the play the solo voices you want. So when you put the A down, you want the A. How does your fourth finger operate best in the bow on the D string? That's what you want. Yeah. Now at the best, throughout the whole thing, a kind of stroking and releasing of the notes so that when you play the moving voice, 
you don't push it down and hold it there. You strike it slightly and let it rebound so you can go to the next place. Try a little bit of a more uh, hit and release approach to the... as though you know what the solo voices are. to see as you practice how it would feel. Take everything off and play the D. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, good. And you held the A practically anyway, mm -hmm. you know? But you understand what I'm saying? That otherwise you're trying to sound generous and warm and everything, and you're tied against the wall, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I always regarded this as, I mean, it's very generous and genuine and warm. Mm -hmm. And everything, oh, come on, go to prayer like this. Mm -hmm. You know, and in both hands, it would help if you had almost a feeling, a Casals-like feeling of improvising and playing the moving voices. And well, if you, if, if, if you hold some, you hold them. If you don't, you don't. Mm -hmm so that you have um you know get that mm -hmm. and then say okay now i gotta hold some of these other notes mm -hmm. you know but get the the release the generousness of vibrato and the bow being on not stuck. So the bow feels, you know, that it can go after the moving notes. Yes? Um, I realize that's easier said than done, but you can get a different attitude toward the opening of this suite, a kind of you know, eloquent and not, because you do it very well, but you sound like you're very involved in trying to get it out. Mm -hmm. you, yes, yeah. makes sense. Mm -hmm. And after you practice that way, then go back to playing these notes and play. I mean, if the tied note was given up a little bit or didn't quite have as much on, that's not, you, we've already heard the tide note. We, you played it as a featured note, and then you let go a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, different style of playing, a little bit like what I was saying in the canons. I wish, pianissimo notwithstanding, that you would play, the only way I'm going to be able to figure out what you're playing is if all the characteristics of this fugue subject are, it's not a theme, it's a fugue subject. Now, everything that's in this fugue is right here. Mm -hmm. So to be sure in the bowing and, you know, that, 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 that what you do is absolutely is a duple, a triple, a dotted rhythm, and two staccatos. Mm -hmm. and, and somehow specifically placed in the bow, and it's not singing exactly. It's not non-singing, mm -hmm. but it's speaking. Mm -hmm. Try. <laughs> And 
play me this for a minute. Yeah, and both. Uh, play me this. Now be sure in the release of the hand, the release of the bow, that this sounds like. that you voice it, you're going to try to play bumpy and boom, bump, bump. And whenever you managed here, play this. Yes, and, and so now when you play again here, spoken about everything mm -hmm. and in playing a fugue um, especially a skillfully written fugue like this there it is the entire piece is right there in the f first four beats mm -hmm. so that when you play a duple tiro tiro yoro da pa ba ba pi ba pi and the most you can do especially with pom be sure you have the string under you and you get it to ring with, a, with, with, with your hand brilliantly. Here's where, where, where Mr. Kirschbaum's tripod does very well. Yes. Yes, I, I, I stole that one from him a long time ago. That's a very valuable thing. That's mm -hmm. Mr. Kirschbaum saying that this is his tongue, that's his balance. And in, in, a, in a fugue where boppy, boppa, it's going to be terribly important, the ability to have your index finger Um, so that all the way through, as you concentrate, it probably isn't, except for the moments like this, play, play from here for a while, except for the moments like that, it probably isn't lyrical bow or that much bow, and even this is a delineation of a two and a three. Mm -hmm. Try. about sitting up straight and putting your putting your hands right in the contact point of and and playing brilliantly in the left hand so that it's a different if you've played like this managed to do it in the canto mm -hmm. suddenly mm -hmm. it's a different it's a different attitude totally mm -hmm. it's it's try like holding notes, whereas yum, ba -da -bam, ba -da -bam, ba -da -ba. Um, as you practice, get the contact point of the moving voice. Let the open string take care of itself, you know. Yes. Okay, now, now add. 
add the open string. There's something about the spoken nature of everything you say, and everything you say, especially when you're going to add two voices, three voices, will influence the tempo. I almost want to say that the same thing as I said in, in, in uh, the first canon that was played, uh, um, clarity, clarity of speech is terribly important. It's a different attitude. So your tempo, uh, very rhythmic, moderato, mm -hmm. so, that, so that everything you say, and I can hear the voices enter, and I can hear extensions, episodes based on things like yom, ba bee ba 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 bee ba bee and even yo ba 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 bee dee separate is still a three and a two. <laughs> upside down as it is, is it's legato, but it's legato bore yada da ti, bore yada ti. And the attitude of the left hand also is brilliantly spoken. The vibrato such as you use would be vibrato from the finger, from the finger action. It's not really vibrato, it's vibrancy from the finger action. Mm -hmm. That's it, so, so that you really change up. The, the only thing about the lamento I do want to say to you, and that is You've got to allow your vibrato to release, and it sounds like you're holding it like this. So I, I deliberately grabbed the piece and said, wait a minute, is, is this a lament? Because it sounded not like a lament, but like a very well-played singing aria. But I, the, the lights in the audience were dark. I didn't see that it was lament. We have to tell them that it was lament. Mm -hmm. And there's something about, just play one bar of this. There's something about allowing your vibrato to release off of the finger so that, so that the joints of your thumb, the joints of your finger are flexible to, and, and so that the bow, after you make the note, the bow allows the note to, to ring. And be sure you go far enough out to the tip that you're not ending at the frog holding your, yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, again, allow your vibrato to be gentle and warm, you know. Yes, yes, that sounds like a lament, and especially the climax of the lament. Don't go like that, you know. I know what it feels like up there, but you have to allow your, don't, don't press down with your hand, let your natural arm weight be there, and let the hand be vibrant mm -hmm. and generous. Mm -hmm. So that it's a completely different state of spirit and mind than the movement you just played. Mm -hmm. This is, in, in the attitude toward tempo here, this is whatever tempo will allow you to speak like this. Mm -hmm. I, picked it, I, bit, I picked up the program and said, wait, this is the lament, right? Because you were going mm -hmm. like this, and I wasn't sure. Mm -hmm. Bravo, bravo. Okay, the play beautiful. You.